I want to give a little overview of the design of my layout. Um, right here, the plywood portion from there over to there um, was the first part that I had. And it's two 4 by 8 foot sheets of plywood. And you can see the outline of track that's been since ripped up. Uh, it basically formed a loop. And um, that was an evolution from another railroad that sort of started upstairs as a 4 by 8 foot um, layout. And the problem that I quickly found is that there's not much you can do with a 4x8 because you have unrealistically tight curves and you have a fairly limited amount of space in the middle uh, to put industries that can be switched, um, like a real railroad would switch cars in and out of industries. So I kind of got stalled and I didn't really want to do scenery on it because I didn't want to spend a lot of time on scenery that was probably just going to go to waste anyways because um, the railroad really didn't fit what I wanted to build or what I liked. So I rotated the railroad 90 degrees um, to its current position you can see here and I decided to add on to it. Now I took um, my original yard trackage which I wanted to keep in place because it has many many turnouts um, and not only are turnouts very labor intensive to install but they're also uh, fairly costly. These are some of the cheapest turnouts available um, which are Atlas and they're still about $13 or more um, per turnout in addition to the turnout control mechanisms. I'm using the um, Caboose Industries ground throws which I really like because um, they give a very hands-on feel to running the railroad and they are much um, cheaper and easier to wire and put in than the um, slow motion machines with actual electrical switches. But I wanted to salvage that and so I took the existing yard and staging tracks and I turned them into an end loop which you can see right here the end of the uh, donut loop. And then uh, the track diverges from its original roadbed right there and then goes inwards to form uh, a turnaround balloon loop and in the place of some of the trackage where I was going to have a town and industries which didn't really work out I put in a, a workbench. Um, now I have a nice open well-lit space to work on everything from models all the way to uh, the heavy construction of the layout in addition to my uh, computers which I will cover in a, another video. So over here, I basically did the only thing that I could in terms of design. Um, I have a corner of the basement that's underneath the dining room. And um, I can't really just snake willy-nilly all around the basement because I'm sharing it with a lot of other things. Uh, I'm sharing it with the ping pong table. I'm sharing it with an old overstuffed chair you can see there in the background and a uh, couch that the cat sleeps on. Uh, I'm sharing it with a lot of storage, a uh, little bit of a wood shop that you can see in the background over there, uh, in addition to the uh, heating and hot water system for the house, all the electrical wiring, uh, and uh, storing the patio furniture, and uh, lots of other things that are in the basement. So I had to keep it fairly compact. Um, what this pretty much left me with was the ability to uh, put in what you see here, which is a loop-to-loop -loop, um, layout that goes from the original layout's loop and it goes around, there's the furnace kicking on, goes around to the end here where they actually touch back together. Um, now I had a very critical option when I was designing this and the option was to push this right here over and have the ability to walk in and out of the layout and I decided to go the other route um, which was to put in a duck under um, which is right there and I'll cover that a little bit more in my uh, creature comforts video um, about some of the cool stuff I've put on the layout to make it more comfortable to work on and eventually operate. Um, I would not recommend a duck under for a really permanent layout. Um, this is a sectional layout. It will eventually be disassembled and it will go with me when I eventually have um, a house or a condo or an apartment or something that has either a basement or a garage 
um, where the trains um, can live. But that was really a space compromise for me, and I decided that um, it was in my best interest to uh, put the duck under. And it's turning out all right. Uh, it was pretty bad at first when I didn't have the padding on there, but now that the padding's on there and the uh, rubber goes underneath it, these rubber floor mats, it's a lot easier to get in and out. Now, what I decided was I needed an offstage area. So the existing layout, since it was not configured at all realistically, um, not even stretching it fiction realistically, would be my offstage storage. Very high track density, uh, lots of storage capacity, and that will eventually be accessed from the other side because there will be a backdrop um, between here and the other side. The backdrop will go in here. The track in front is my shop track um, where our car, if it needs to be repaired but can still run on the tracks, will be switched. Um, and I'm hoping to actually integrate that into an operating session as an online industry or possibly as a uh, sort of railroad car shop, if you will. Um, but it's really just my workbench. And I'm also going to wire the second half of this as a programming track. So back to the beginning over here. Um, I unfortunately kind of underestimated the size of this drain pipe here. And this drains the entire house. So there's not much I can do about moving it. But I thought it was relatively small because it had been hidden behind a shelving unit for a number of years. I'd never really noticed it there. Um, except for the fact that it existed. When I actually started building the layout, I realized it's actually about, actually a little bit over a foot deep. Um, so I'm, I thought about running the track underneath it, but that would necessitate two uh, tunnels, um, one going into the part underneath it, and then one coming out, which I realized would look kind of ridiculous, given the fact that there's going to be a tunnel right over here coming off of the staging area. Uh, there's just not that many tunnels in Connecticut. There are a few, but not that many. So I decided to put the track um, in front of that drain pipe, and I'm going to build the backdrop around it so you really won't notice it when you're actually operating the layout. And I'll hopefully make that into a rock cut, which will look fairly realistic uh, for Connecticut, given that there's a lot of uh, open rock cuts in the state, both for highways and for rail. Over here, um, I came off on a little bit of a curve, and it's a good thing that I did a temporary installation first as I realized that while this track technically is operable, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, the turn here is extremely sharp. What I'm going to have to do is uh, pull this switch over, or this turn out over, and have a more um, straight path. It's going to come out of a tunnel. Um, this is double thick foam, uh, four inches thick, so it's going to go over a, a little river I'm going to carve out, and then it'll come over here. Uh, at which point um, it's going to go through the rock cut and then into an industrial area, um, which is going to start over here. Um, now this drain pipe is actually giving me a nice opportunity on the corner here to put an industry that has a um, trailing point when you're coming from staging uh, industry to switch out, possibly uh, two industries. <coughs> Excuse me. As you come over here, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do here, but I'm probably going to have to move the track back a little bit um, here in order to make uh, this curve reasonable for the trains to go through. Um, technically, yes, they will run on this, but it looks kind of ridiculous. They hang over a lot. Um, my goal is about a 30 inch minimum radius. I'm not actually completely measuring it, but I am going a bit wider than 22, which should end up around um, between 26 and 30 inches. Um, well, it's not the ideal for HO. The ideal for HO is at least 30, if not 36 or 40 on the main line. Um, that's what I have space for, so that's kind of what I'll be doing. As we move over here, the track's probably going to have to be in the back, um, both because of that curve and because of the curve up here. Um, but that's all right. I can have a couple industries up front um, that can be switched in and out. This will be modern day. Um, this will be modern industry industries that are in Connecticut. And I have a list of industries that P&W switches out, which I'm using as a baseline. And as we come over here, um, 